What you're currently looking at is the cover art for one of the most popular PlayStation 2 games in existence. There are anywhere from 18 to just over 19 million copies of it out there. If you haven't guessed it yet, it's the PBPX95506 demo disc packed in with PlayStation 2 systems throughout 2001. Okay, I might have been cheating a little bit by calling it a game, but why am I covering this? Well, as a curiosity, I wanted to see how well this demo disc holds up, looking back at it from where we are today, with the PS2's lifespan all said and done. Does it showcase what the system has to offer in terms of visual, sound, gameplay, and variety? Well, let's find out. The demo disc consists of six playable demos, five videos, and three extras. As far as I can tell, the main difference between the videos and extras is that the videos are styled more like trailers, whereas the extras are just something put together to give the viewer an idea of what's to come. But we're gonna start with the playable demos, and first up, we have Airblade. And fuck yeah do I love Airblade! If you're not familiar with it, imagine a mixture between The Wipeout and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series of games. In the demo, you only have one stage to roam around on, and you have a pretty short time limit, albeit definitely enough to finish the stage. You have some very simple goals to achieve, which you complete while on a hoverboard, which is the main way of getting around in Airblade. While going about your missions, you can perform plenty of really fucking rad looking tricks and grapple onto a bunch of stuff which looks fucking amazing and feels so satisfying. You also have a boost, but for the most part, especially in the stage you play on in the demo, I would not recommend constantly using it. Calmly planning out your path and getting off some dope tricks along the way is what makes the game really fun. Using the boost too much makes the planning a lot harder and makes clipping into corners killing your momentum a lot easier. The boost also isn't an always available thing, you have to build up your boost meter by performing tricks. So I found the funnest way to make use of it was by using it for short bursts of speed to get some more air just before you hit ramps and stuff like that. Airblade looks and plays amazingly well for the time. Everything is smooth and fluid. Nothing feels rushed. It comes together so well and an absolutely great choice of a game to show off on the disc. Next up, we have Dark Cloud. Which is a title most of you are probably familiar with. It's a cult classic and has a lot of adoring fans. I myself, though, just haven't gone around to playing through it yet. Don't hurt me! Oh, right, yeah, I'm in this room alone. There's no one to actually throw anything at me. Cool. Fuck! You start out with some really damn cool backstory. I mean, instant goosebumps. It makes you feel like a hero. You then have the opportunity to get to name your character. And after a chillingly cool backstory like that, you can't just put your actual name. No, it has to be something to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies. It has to be something people will remember for a millennia. It has to be something like... Like, uh... Fluffykins. I'm not gonna hold your hand through the entire opening cutscene, but I assure you, it definitely has a unique charm to it. But to sum it all up, and in no way do it justice, Bad guy summons Danny, but in town is terrorized, whole world gets screwed, you're at savior, this old guy's basically got for all intents and purposes, he helped keep the world from complete death by trapping people in places and bubbles, and you gotta go get him. Cool. Okay, so you start off at... Uh, what? I... I guess I'll just reset? Okay, so it's working now? I think. I started out in a field, and after exploring a bit, I found a giant gate that I couldn't get into because I was missing the key. So I explored a little bit more and came across the mayor's house, which seems to have been the only thing to have survived the earlier bombardment of evil. And oh my god, he's such a nice guy! Me and the mayor then spoke for a little bit, and he gave me a whole bunch of cool shit to start my adventure off with. Ah, you know how to flatter a guy. Oh! Saving the world. Got it. Yep. I'm on it. Don't worry about it. No distractions. <sighs> the mayor then tells me to go back to the DIVINE BEAST CAVE! Which is what the gate I was at earlier leads to. And he also gave me the key to get inside. Once I do, the old guy from earlier shows up, who I think is named Dran? Dran? I, I don't know, one of the two. And then he tells me a bunch of stuff through these really charming animations. Seriously, look at this. 
That's a terrible. Essentially, it's just a big tutorial that equates to you can attack things with your sword and teleport, K by. So your goal here is to find and collect Atla, which are these little orb things containing parts of the world that Dran created to stop total annihilation. Once you exit the cave, you have the opportunity to place all the things you collected in Atla around the field you started in. That's a really nice touch. It gives genuine visual feedback to the player and lets them know their progress by how much stuff is in this field. It makes all the collecting you do feel really meaningful and not just like a standard collectathon. You have to make multiple trips through the cave as you have a health and weapon strength meter that you need to replenish with items you can only get from the map. The fighting system here feels good, but nothing amazing. If you think you know how the combat feels just from looking at this gameplay, then you probably do, it's that kind of a thing. That's about it for Dark Cloud, a good choice and a fun and calm experience. Next up, we have Klonoa 2, Lunatee's Bell. And the Klonoa series of games, much like the Dark Cloud ones, I just haven't had a chance to delve into. It starts out with a little cutscene that doesn't have too much relevance here because this is more of a gameplay driven game than a story driven game. Right away, I get very similar vibes from this game as I do a duo of games on the PlayStation 1 called Pandemonium, which are super fun by the way, definitely check them out. Much like Pandemonium, Klonoa 2 makes excellent use of branching paths, along with background and foreground interaction. There's two levels on the demo to play through, and there are no particularly difficult challenges, but everything is so well crafted and put together that the gameplay is just so smooth and fun right off the bat. The music is really damn good too. I actually went to seek out the soundtrack after I was done with the demo. All of your standard platformer expectations are filled in here, with a jump, double jump, and a simple yet interesting attack. You shoot out a small blue orb type thing and pull enemies in which you can then throw at other enemies Kirby regurgitation style, or you can just abuse their supple little bodies as platforms to get extra height. Oh, and you have a small glide as well which gives you extra length on your jumps. Not a whole lot more to say really, it's just a very well polished platformer. This is Football 2002. Oh yay, a football game next, I'm so excited. <sighs> Okay, in all fairness, I'm not opposed to all sports games, but a lot of earlier football slash soccer titles just don't really hold up. Anyway, the game's okay. I guess. Yeah. And that is all the time I'm spending on This Is Football 2002. You know why? Because this demo gave me half a match to play. That is two minutes of gameplay. It doesn't have time for me, I'm not gonna make time for it. World Rally Championship. Surprisingly, a damn good addition. I didn't expect much from this title, because at first it has very slidey controls that you need to get used to, but once you do, it becomes a really fun experience. Unlike almost every other game with a driving mechanic, it's actually a really enjoyable challenge to try and stay on course and drive as best you can, crashing as little as possible. With almost every other game of this nature, you'd really just want to drive like a maniac and go fast. I honestly didn't think I'd have that much fun with it, but yeah, World Rally Championship. A good choice for the- JESUS CHRIST! Holy hell! Talk about sound inconsistencies! Ew. Okay, last game on the disc. WWF Smackdown, just bring it. Now, my wrestling knowledge isn't exactly up to date, but what I do know about wrestling is that it's entertainment, and that is what it's all about. Putting on a good match for the crowd. Well, how's this for a good match? But apart from that game breaking loop, lots of cool moves and combos, I really had fun with it. Although I couldn't quite figure out how to pin my opponent consistently, sometimes I could but they'd never stay down for long and the game wouldn't really tell me, so that kind of took the wrestling aspect out of it but I really had fun in total, a good addition to the disc. Well that's it for the playable demos, let's now take a look at the videos. Dropship United Peace Force. It's really bland. Nothing here makes me feel like I should even check the game out. And the music? 
I feel like I should be stripping to it or something. Gran Turismo 3, Ace. Holy fuck, again? I'm not playing this up for comedic effect, it's legitimately that damn loud compared to the rest of the audio on the disc. I can only imagine the sound mixer guys all had important shit to do that day, so they kept swapping over while working on this, and one of them had bad hearing and was like, I'm not shouting! I can hear just fine, no, fuck you, I'll do your work or do mine. Just got this fucking music left to do, right, here we go. I can't even hear that! But anyway, bad trailer, really kind of a bad game, so I guess it's fitting. Jack and Daxter, the goddamn precursor legacy! Fuck yeah! It's amazing, go buy it twice. Oh, and the video here is really good too. MotoGP2. It's motorcycles, on tracks. Yeah, I hate to repeat myself, but it's just really bland. If only there was something else they could incorporate to make it more exciting, like card games or something. Uh, nah, nah, that would never happen. The final video is on Wipeout Fusion, and it really shows off the feel of the series. Visually and sound-wise, it pulls you into the world of the game, pacing itself just right along the way. A really solid and well put together video. Next up, we have the extras, two of which are just longer videos showing off the gameplay of a couple games. One being Devil May Cry, and the other being Soul Reaver 2 Legacy of Kain. These are put together well enough and show off what they aim to. Just some fun little things to watch. The last extra is named YA Basic, or Ya yeah Basic, which sounds like an insult. Holy shit, it's a coding platform! A simple one, but wow, I didn't expect that. I'm a... Uh... I'm not going to mess with this because I have no idea what I'm doing, but if you're into that kind of stuff, I'm sure it's a really cool addition. As for me, it's scary. Backing away. Well, that was the PBPX95506 demo disc. It's kind of hard to rate it, but as a demo, I would give it a solid 7 repeated wrestling moves out of 10. This demo disc definitely does the PS2 justice, even after all this time. There's a wide variety of stuff here to show off what the system really had to offer in its earlier days. It has a few issues with inconsistent sound levels, and a couple problems with idle times that last like 2 milliseconds before games kick you away, but overall, it does the job it sets out to do well, and is certainly an important part of the system's history that needs to be remembered. Well, that was everything for this review, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next. Take care.